Uh, good afternoon, Techies. Kit Mechatronic Society welcomes you to this exclusive speaker session today. We are glad to have some of the esteemed faculty members with us from KDU. We welcome Dr. Professor P. Chandrasekhar, Professor Ashwini Kumar, and other faculty members to join our session today. Now, for all your information, KMHS it is a mechatronic society which was built by our seniors under the, under, super, under the supervision of Professor Chandrasekhar and Ashwini Kumar. This society aims to create challenging projects that can either improve or change the face of humankind. We are proud to announce that we successfully created more than eight projects we are on, which are undergoing patent today. Now, introducing the speaker of the day, Mr. Vincent Cock. Thank you so much for taking out time to share your knowledge and insight, Vincent. Now, I'll be handling my uh, mic to Amtang Shu. He will tell you more about Mr. Vincent Cock. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, definitely. We are doing it. Hello, Vincent. Welcome again uh, to the session. Uh, this is Amrit Anshu Dash. Welcome you all to the exclusive speaker session with Mr. Vincent Koch. Hello, Vincent. Uh, hope you are doing well. Yeah, I've been doing well. Thank you for the invitation. Right. Uh, then uh, let me tell uh, everyone a bit more about you. Vincent is basically a community evangelist, technical trainer, IoT robotics specialist. Is actively involved in volunteering and helping young minds to think creatively for projects. Right. So he has been uh, developing a community uh, of Discord uh, that is named as Embedded System Professionals with people from all over the world to discuss basically and innovate and implement the projects that impact the society. All right. Uh, currently, he is a senior product manager at SJ Cosmo Future and uh, ex application engineer at Intel. Also, uh, keeping aside all of this, techie things, uh, he's an interesting and upbeat individual who is prompt in responding to a bevy of things. So, when when I just first messaged him, it it was like uh, not expected. He just messaged me back very very soon, really very soon. He was very prompt in responding and, and to student messages and also to discussions. Quite open. So, let's have him on the stage. Welcome, Vincent and. Uh, I'm really sorry for any kind of background noise if I have. And no you're absolutely audible. All right. And let's start the session today. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, welcome, uh, everyone. So yeah, I, I let me kind of present my screen. Yeah, sure. Please. Uh, will we be recording this session? Yeah, absolutely. We are doing it. Okay. okay. Yeah. So let me present. So uh, hopefully you can see my screen. Right. So no, it has. Oh yeah, not I, I'm, I'm presenting. I'm presenting. Yeah. So, right. Okay. okay. Can you see my screen right now? Yes. Yes, it's visible. All right. That's good. So I hope everyone can hear me clearly and also see my slide. Right. Okay. So stop. So I will present in this way. So I think it will be good. Okay, everyone see it very clearly. Okay, no any uh, destruction, right? No, absolutely not. Yeah, please, but, I, but I mean, I can't see it all, but it's, it's fine. So if anything, please let me know because I'm seeing just a whole screen of my slides, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'll inform you if yeah, anything sure. drops up. Yeah. yeah, so hi. Uh, I think good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Mr. Vincent. So uh, yeah, so you feel free to connect with me at LinkedIn. So and uh, let's learn together. So I post a most daily on my LinkedIn about technologies, about some of the things that I discover uh, around the world. So either either some promotions or maybe some new knowledge or maybe emerging technologies. So this I, Internet of Things is just one portion because uh, I think as as uh, requested by the Mechatronic Society. So which I, I I had some previous experience on that. So I'm I'm feel happy to share with you on this experience. Yeah. So let, let's begin. So feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. So either scan the QR code or just key in uh, vinscott.com. Yeah. Okay, so that's my domain. All right. So basically, what, what, what are we going to cover for today is what is IoT? IoT project showcase and some of the job opportunity in the area of IoT and what kind of skills needed and how do you get started right? 
this is, I mean, almost quite common for all the uh, people that wanted to come into the news, uh, this new area. And finally, hopefully, we, we've got some time, so which will get you excited, which is we will have a mini hands-on. Okay, so not just about me talking, so we are able to have a hands-on. So it's very simple hands-on using your mobile device and some of the Microsoft Azure so that you can able to understand the concept of IoT via this hands-on. Okay, so maybe I first question, what is Internet of Things? Maybe can you just, maybe anyone, if you want to wise out what, what is Internet of Things, so that maybe at least I can understand your thoughts. Absolutely. Uh, guys, uh, you can uh, just unmute yourself and you can Yeah, that, that would be better me. because I can't see the chat right now. Yeah, that's that's okay. People will uh, unmute and answer. You can just yeah. just give a vague idea as to what you know about I IoT, or maybe what you have read about in some blogs, or just random thoughts about what may be IoT. You can just speak up, all right? Yeah, just speak up. So that this this session is not meant for just one way. So it's an interactive session. So we learn together. So that I I wanted to know what what do you think about IoT and and what kind of things that I can deliver via this session for you. Yeah. So anyone. Maybe one or two people, you can wise up what do you think about IoT? It's been there for quite some years. Yeah, go on, Nikhil. Yeah, Nikhil, go on. Uh, IoT, uh, and basically IoT is about uh, device, our devices, day-to-day -day home devices, like which we use, uh, which are not generally assumed to be smart. For example, even our curtains, etc. cetera. Uh, you know, uh, making them... Uh, or uh, using our uh, sensors, etc., to make them smart, as in uh, they close whenever it's sun outside or something like that. That is my basic understanding. I okay. Yeah, nice. That's good. I think you you have some key points like sensors, or the and, and smarts, right? I think that that is really good uh, understanding of IoT. What else? Yeah. Anyone? Some, Maybe one more. Yeah, absolutely. Fitzum wants to speak. Yeah, please go. On. Uh, okay. Am I audible? Yes. Um, for me, uh, in terms of things, is, is uh, a connection of smart devices. For instance, I can connect my, my refrigerator with my phone, and through that, I can know uh, when when it's full or not. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, that that is good. So you can know it's it's kind of like remote monitoring, right? You can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, right? That's good. So anyone wanted to try us? If no, then I will continue. No worries, we will have more chance to answer some of my things. Right? Okay, so I have a video right here. So uh, it's just a, a short video like uh, explain about what is IoT. So I hope this will get you understand some of the IoT concept. Can you hear the noise, the voice? Are you able to hear the, the sound? No. I don't think so. It's, it's inaudible. Is it okay? It's inaudible. Uh, wait, uh... Let me see how can I share my, sorry about that. So let me just check. I will need to share my voice so that it will be good. Okay, I'm sharing the screen right now. You are not able to hear the uh, sound, is it? Uh, now, I, uh, I think, let, let's, let me just try. If you can't hear that, I think you can see some of the uh, visual, hopefully. All right. Okay.
Uh, Vincent, let's do one thing. Uh, if you could just share the video of this. Yeah, sure. I will share the video. I mean, after this yeah. session, right? So that you can. You you could just share the link of uh, this video so that people can see and uh, we can uh, continue. Yeah, sure. I think. Uh, yeah, just just so I just show some uh, basic understanding yeah. of the IoT. Yes. Right? Yeah, I think the behind. I think you can take some time to understand it. Okay. So basically, yeah. So what 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 is IoT is 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 that yeah, I think some of you get it right. So it means taking all the things in the world and connecting them to the internet. So like for example, your smartphone, your anything says internet, need internet, right? Nowadays, I don't think you're able to survive without internet, right? So this, this basically means IoT is generally about that. Means taking all the things in the world and connecting them to the internet. So I, I have some figures later on to support some of my, uh, this statement. So like for example, you see from 2015 until right now, we are in 2022, right? So you see every day, the numbers of IoT devices is increasing. You, you can imagine for yourself, you have a smartphone, you have a laptop, some of you might have a smartwatch, right? even have a tablet. So it's, it's uh, one person, four or five devices. right? And then with the number of people in this world, right? so the number of IoT devices will be increasing. And not just all this, right? we have like smart refrigerator, uh, smart light bulb, all that. Right? Those, everything are IoT devices. So it's increasing in the number. So and also, so you can just think about like in IoT, there's sensors, devices, and then there's this cloud, right? And all the application. So for example, you have a Google Drive. So there's the, the server, the cloud, and then you have a device to access the server. And I think just maybe recently, maybe a few months ago, there's this uh, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp and Messenger or uh, offline. I guess this is a huge news out there, right? I guess you know about that. So that's where basically all the servers are down. That's where you can't access the internet, right? Even though with your device. So that's the basic understanding of IoT. And some of this, I, I guess you know, like the smart refrigerator, uh, smart dustbin, smart light bulb, and also like smart meter. So some of the example devices. So. In, in summary, IoT, I mean, for myself, my, my understanding is that it's all about remote monitoring and control. So if you see this dashboard, you can monitor what, what is the, 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 maybe in the camera, so like a CCTV, so you are able to monitor what is out there and, and so on, right? And then monitor some of the temperature, humidity, all that. And also you are able to control, means remote control, whether the light should be on and off, right? So you no longer need to go physically over there to turn on the light, but you can turn it on maybe once before you are home, all that, right? So it's about remote monitoring and control. And basically data, it's all about the data as the data is the new oil right now. So you can see some of the, the sectors for the IoT. So smart cities, connected industry, connected buildings, connected cars, smart energy, and so on. So, so IoT can be applicable for all of this field. It's a lot. Basically, every field that you are in, smart retail, smart healthcare, everything, right? So it's, it's really a, a growing trend. So some of the top IoT projects, yeah, so I, I will not uh, play this, but I will uh, send it over later. So just some of the inspiration for the IoT project. So I, I will just show you some of this. So basically, these are the prototype. So learning prototype. So I guess there's a lot out there. So I just choose one of it. So you can use some of these kits so that you're able to learn what is IoT in an easy way. And some of this also you are able to get the temperature and humidity data upload to the cloud, and then we can monitor it remotely. And this is a commercial IoT. So the IoT is not just for prototyping. Once your idea grows big, you are able to produce something like this. So this is a smart uh, ring bell, right? So this is a smart doorbell with cameras. So basically you are remote monitoring, and also you are able to see who's coming to your house, and then you, you, you 
either lock or unlock the door, right? Yeah. So this is already acquired by Amazon. And also some of these IoT sensors, temperature, humidity, water level are deployed on the on the field. So like farm, so that you can able to capture all of this data on a dashboard easily so that you can monitor either what, what are the things that you need to do to improve your production. Right? So let's do a demo. Can you quickly scan this QR code? I hope it works. So you can see this. Can you see the LED screen on my on, in front of me? So you scan the QR code, I guess you will, you will be bringing to the, you'll be bringing to the uh, dash, a dashboard to control three LEDs. Let's see who are able to get it to control my LED. Anyone can just try it. So scan the QR code, it will bring you to a website. So to control my LED. So right now you are in India and in Singapore. So you are able to control this. So we are doing this remote control. Let's try it out. The light is still not on. Is there any problem to connect with my device? Anyone is trying this? Yes, guys, you could uh, you could just... Uh, yeah, I saw someone is controlling. Can you see the red light? Yes. Yeah, someone, red light. Okay, okay, yellow light. Yeah, so I'm if doing... You see, yeah, if you more. see, some of this, uh, when it's someone is controlling, seven, you will see the slider is... 30%. Okay. Red, 30%. All right. Yeah, so you can control the brightness. So everyone, I encourage you to try it out. So this is basically the magic of IoT. You are able to control it. Of course, this one is because I give you the, the authorization to control, right? So that's why the, the in terms of the security is okay. Yeah, because I authorize you to control. Right? So anyone is still trying out. I see it's not on the full brightness. So you can see the percentage and also the on the screen, right? You can see the three light that I prepared red white and orange can someone just turn it off let's turn it off so that we can proceed because i don't have access to the dashboard right now else it will be on there forever right Okay, is anyone trying to off it? All right, the yellow, okay, good. Thank you. So that's basically the three, uh, three light demo. So, all right, I saw someone still lighting on the orange LED. Yeah, turn it off, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so I, I hope you yeah, get excited with this uh, simple demo. I mean, it, it's not too hard to do that. You just need a, a Wi-Fi chip and then doing some protocol and then you are able to get let people to access uh, the entire application. So this is just one simple example for the remote more uh, remote control. It's not the remote monitoring yet. Later on, we'll do something uh, remote monitoring. Yeah. So how about a future start? How do you start for this IoT in the career? So this is just some uh, statistic that I'm getting from the internet. So the global internet of things market is actually projected to grow, if you can see from here. So it will be keep on growing, very steep, okay? So there's more and more demand for IoT uh, career, right? And some of the job posting on the Indeed platform, so you can see previously there's not much, but, but recently few years is actually growing for the number of uh, employment about IoT. So you can search for some IoT engineers and IoT related field. So maybe you're, you're thinking IoT, so what, what, what are some of the career options for IoT, right? Maybe it's just IoT engineer, but what exactly IoT engineer is doing, right? So generally I, I found out there's five main domain for IoT. If you understand the concept of IoT, these five will make sense for you. Data analytics, because IoT is all about data. 
you collect the census data from anywhere, right? So that, that's why you need someone to do the data analytic so that you analyze the data, whether it's, it's good data or bad data. And also network and the networking structure. So like, for example, just now what I did the demo, we, we need some network protocol, network structure, so that there's a proper routing to my internet, right? And of course, the third one, security. IoT, because everything is connected. That, that means hacker can be like, coming to hack your system or whatever. So that's why there's a demand in this cybersecurity field so that maybe someone is interested to, to look into the security field for IoT. Hardware and devices, right? Basically, you need a different hardware. Uh, you need to design a more efficient hardware to do IoT, low power IoT, and also the creation of user interface, as you can see here. Data is just a data. You need to present it nicely, right? The user interface so that it makes sense for the management, for some decision makers to just, when they see the dashboard, they know what they need and how they made the decision. These are the five main career that I just uh, put on. And some of the notable yeah. skills, sorry? Sorry to interrupt you, Vincent, but there's a question that yeah. says, what are some of the biggest security vulnerabilities that come with IoT? Biggest vulnerability, yeah, basically the, IoT basically is, is, for example, just how whatever that I do, right, is actually not secure because it's not HTTPS. So I'm just doing some HTTP, so there's no extra layer of it. So anyone that have, for example, uh, hackers, right, if they have the QR code, they can just scan and then maybe they can just come over to my device already. But I hope you don't do that to me, okay, because I give you that. So it, it might happen, right, if someone that's really is a hacker or whatever, they, they might do that, right. So... It's actually, it's very, nowadays, there's so many scams and so on out there in the market, right? So, so all this is really uh, need to be, that there's need this uh, security la layer so that like, for example, the, the OTP, right? One-time password, all that, but I don't have all this, right? So that's why the, the vulnerability is actually very high. So I, I might get attacked on that, right? So that's where the banks, the, the some of the companies, they have password, all that kind of uh, things, right? The fingerprint, all that, yeah. So that there's a layer of security, yeah. So right. that's so, why uh, that's why we need an expert to do that, right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, since you're talking about IoT, something crops up in everyone's mind is that um, is Web three related to IoT? Uh, yes, battery. That's why that that's under hardware and devices. So you need to design something uh, like a low power, right? Because you need to deploy the node the sensors on maybe of your house, right? You, you might not be powering up via the wall plug. So that's why the battery, you need to make sure the battery is enough. And then there's something like deep sleep, right? Wherever you are not monitoring, you go to sleep. Wherever something trigger, for example, motion sensor, is got triggered, then you only wake up and send the data over. So that this, this is called like a, a low power mode, right? So battery saving or that. So battery is definitely a consideration in IoT. So which I fall under this hardware and devices. Yeah. So usually we will we'll like to be like having a button, right? A IoT button that is, you can deploy anywhere instead of like the button need to be connected to a wall plug. So all the wirings are really messy. Yeah. Right, right. We could okay. move it. Yeah. Okay, so very good questions. Yeah. So battery is definitely one of the key components in the IoT, yeah. So some of the notable skills required to become an IoT developer. So for example, right now you are in maybe in universities or maybe early career, right? So some of these skills, so IoT is actually a wire, it needs a lot of skills. You need to know about hardware. So for example, the uh, design of the hardware, right? What, what are the architecture of the hardware? How do you program the hardware, right? Uh, what, what are the things, right? Then the software, right? Either C++ or Python. So these two definitely need to come together. So, but of course you can choose to just focus on the hardware portion or just the software portion. But I think you might need to know some of it. And then of course the soft skill is, you, you can't run away from the soft skill. You need to know how to present your ideas. How do you solve some problem? How do you have a teamwork, okay? To, to work with people. Yeah. So that, that's definitely need to have a soft skill as an as IoT developer. 
So how to get started? Right? I guess you have a lot of questions on how do I get started? So I have actually put on some resources that I think is very helpful for myself so that you can actually uh, take it and then understand from there or maybe start from there. So I, I have some of this QR code so you can just screenshot or maybe even just uh, take uh, scan the QR code and then directly save the link. Right? So I have this IoT notes. So this is a very nice uh, graphics IoT note by the favorite. So you can just scan the QR code or maybe just get the link. So this will help you to understand about IoT nodes in a, a very easy, a uh, very graphical way. Okay, so it's, it's done by the favorite. So one of my uh, friends is a, a lecturer. So they do this. I think it's still free to download. So quickly download that so that you can uh, use it as your reference. And also this, this is another one also by this Dr. Mazlan. Uh, from Beirut. So it's built your career in IoT. So there's some slides on that. So you can have a look at his talk. So Dr. Mazla is actually a, a IoT talk leader as well in, in the world. So you can scan the QR code or maybe just get a screenshot of this page. And also this, this is another great news is that Azure Cloud AOK and Microsoft, they have this 12 weeks, 24 lesson curriculum. So all about IoT basics. So starting from the very basics, how do you apply some of this IoT in different domains such as retail, agriculture, and so on. Right? So this, this is really a great a free curriculum that you can use. Yeah, yeah uh, Vincent, uh, if you could just drop in some pointers regarding uh, what are the courses we could take. Like uh, now there's a craze of Udemy, Coursera courses, right? And yeah. uh, plural site, all of this uh, ed tech courses, right? So, yeah. what courses could be taken for this IoT domain? And uh, since you have seen the world, uh, seen the universities that prefer IoT and robotics as the specializations, what uh, foreign universities do offer these courses? In two parts, yeah. Uh, okay, so you have two questions. So, uh, basically, I, I didn't really prepare any the. For the Udemy or whatever course, but uh, I think after probably after this session, I'm able to uh, send out the recommendation for you guys, because uh, what what I'm preparing here is actually a free resources, so it's it's not it's not something that you need to pay. So all of this is uh, free. So like Udemy and uh, Clueless, right? I think all might need to pay, right? So but I, of course I can recommend some of it to you later on. Yeah. yeah. And the second question. Yeah, so uh, what is the craze? Is that um people are not valuing the free resources. Yes. Right. They're thinking if, if something is connected to money, then that must be valuable. Right. <laughs> not necessarily. So, right. Yeah. Fair enough. Let's, let's move on. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, yeah, of course, uh, if you, uh, we, we can always start with the free resources. And of course, uh, once I think all these free resources, they also provide uh, courses. Right? Like for example, this is uh, one of my friends from Portugal. He, he wrote some free uh, tutorial on his website and also he provides some courses. So you, he sells ebooks, all that, so that you can uh, join his courses and then uh, get some support from him. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, regarding uh, your if, second question on the about foreign universities that offer specialization on IoT. Yeah, actually, uh, for right now, I'm, I'm seeing the growth in this uh, team. Uh, this demands, for example, in Malaysia and uh, in Singapore, I see that there's some uh, public university or maybe even private university they are actually offering these uh, IoT courses. Yeah, for for that, uh, I mean, I, I can't be at, at exact uh, which university yet, but I will need to uh, give me some time. I can uh, let you know some of the university that uh, have this kind of courses, so that maybe even for the degree or master, right, you can consider for right. for having it here. Yeah. Right. Got it. Okay, let's move. On. All right. So and also some of these free courses by uh Six Studio. So how do you use the IoT devices? So Vio Terminal is actually a uh, IoT devices. So you can connect it to a Blink. And so some of the best IoT courses on YouTube. So even it's, it's a free resource, right? So yeah, you can just get some of this uh, on the YouTube to, to learn about it. Yeah, so I, I have two interesting trends that I would like to talk about also, but just in the high level. So Internet of Robotic Things, right? 
So you have Internet of Things. So something like just now, what we do is just turn on and turn off the light. What if you are able to trigger the robot? For example, the robot are in the dangerous place, right? So you can trigger the robot and see what is the robot is doing, right? Like for example, firefighting. So this is the possibility of internet of robotic things. Means robotic with IoT. So you can see some of these telepresent robots. So and then uh, so smart home and robot guards, right? So not necessarily you be there anymore. So you can deploy a robot, be there, and then remotely you can monitor it and trigger ro the robot to do something. So this is one of the interesting trends for Internet of Robotic Thing. And also another one is this tiny ML. So basically it's combining the machine learning with embedded devices because IoT is embedded devices. And machine learning is just a machine learning domain. So when you combine both of them, it's actually called tiny ML, machine learning in microcontroller. Yeah. So this will give the intelligence to the to the edge devices. So I think you heard of these terms are like edge computing, cloud computing. Yeah. So I guess I have enough for my presentation. Before we go to the hands-on portion, shall we take a quick break? Yeah, sure. Uh, you could. Uh... Let's have around uh, two to three minutes break, if that's okay sure. with you. Sure, yeah. yeah let's, then... let's have a break, then we'll go into the hands-on together. Sure, but, sure, sure. Yeah, meanwhile, if any questions, so uh, feel free to ask. I will hop over to the chat and see if any questions. Yeah, actually, uh, they have had some questions from the Google form. So I'll, I'll enumerate some of them. And uh, the rest who all are present here, you could definitely raise your hands. I'll allow you okay. to speak. All right. Yeah, sure. So just ask me. I will try my best to answer in this uh, live session. Sure. Uh, anyone has any questions? Do raise your hand, and uh, I'll I'll let you speak. No questions. No question. No worries. We will just have a break. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I have a question that uh, people have put in uh, in the Google form. So it says. Uh, you talked about IOT, but uh, there is also something like IIoT. So, what is the difference between IOT and IIoT? So, okay, that's a very good question. Yeah, actually, I, IIoT just now I I did cover. It actually means industrial Internet of Things. So, IOT is just a generic term about Internet of Things. But Internet of Things, like just now the the demo that I did. And that's how the prototype for that, right? Like learning prototype, right? It's IoT, means for education usage. But IIoT means that, maybe I, I just go back to my slides. Uh, let me allow me to present and work. Yeah, so actually I, I, I covered two of that, but it's, I didn't mention clearly it's between the IoT and IIoT. So if you can see my screen right now here, this is generally IoT. Basic IoT means you have the device, you learn about the concept and so on about the device, right? Yeah. And this is just IoT. Basic IoT means you are just learning, just prototyping, no money involved, right? It's not deploying to any uh, business use cases. But all this commercial IoT, we are calling it as an industrial IoT. So that means the hardware itself, you need to pass some certification so that it's actually it's robust enough to be like uh to be out there for the rain for the hot sunlight all that right so that there's all these certification so that they are considered it as an industrial iot so so that you are able to use it no matter whether it's a rainy day or sunny day right so that's we call as industrial iot iiot yeah. so that that is the, basically the difference and of course uh when you say about i the this IORT, right? This is different thing. This is Internet of Robotic Things. Means combination of Internet of Things with robotic. Yeah. Right. Okay. I hope that helped. That answers your question. Yes. That, that's something like uh, IoT is an umbrella term under which there are multiple other terms which can be extrapolated, right? Yes. Yeah. So, exactly. people, if you have any doubt, feel free to ask. All right, just raise your hand and it could uh, go on. 
else vincent uh, will will commence at 15 15 so that uh, we can go on with the hands on session right yeah sure oh someone is uh, raising a yes. hand yes please yeah, go um, actually my question is um can you go back to where you say about tiny ml is sure. it the overlap between machine learning and internet of things or internet of robotic things Okay, wait. Ah, uh, so I go back to that. Yeah, actually, yeah. If you are more interested with that, I can also share more with you. So, but for today's purpose, I'm just sharing some brief one because it's really another big topic, right? Yeah. So if you can see here, so it's actually an interlap between uh Internet of Things and the machine learning. Yeah. Or basically embedded okay. devices. Yeah. Because. Uh yeah, because uh, let's say for example your sensors, right? You need to make some uh smart decision, uh without sending the data over to the cloud. So you need to have able to have the capability to know whether this is a cat or a dog, right? For example, a camera capture something without sending back to the cloud. Because sending back to the cloud, you will have the latency, the time delay. So that's why you need to have the on the spot inference, on the spot classification whether what is this, right? So that's why they have. Uh, so nowadays, the embedded uh, chip, right, is getting more advanced and advanced due to this tiny ML. Yeah. Okay. So that that is about the the. So yeah, you can check more on this tiny ML. So even there's this tiny ML uh, foundation as well. There's more more chip that can do this. And this tiny ML is actually very important for the technology such such as autonomous vehicle. I guess you know why autonomous vehicle need to have the uh, on board means local processing. If you send the data back to the cloud, you are generally risking yourself, right? Because if you detect some signs or whatever, right, you send the information back to the cloud, then if, let's say there's a internet cut off, right? Then you will not be able to get the result of the classification, for example. Yeah. So that's why the the embedded domain is actually is pushing very hard by this uh, machine learning, so that they can make the inferencing the classification at the edge, yeah. and also run them on a low power device at the edge. Okay, so this is one of the. The things I think it's just about three or four years right here. Yeah. There's this company, so maybe uh, I mean about about and great. So maybe this yeah, this company that you can have a look. I'm not sure if you know. So this is the H Impulse. So so you can train machine learning algorithm the model online and then deploy on the embedded system. Okay, so some of these, so we are able to so raw data and then label the data, and then you can make the classification directly. So some of these, so I I encourage you to try it out if you are interested. So you can deploy to any of the bot that can run the classification, the inferencing. They might not run the training because training you need a lot of resources. Yeah. Okay, so I also show you one of my project. But I just uh simply combine the uh, robotic with the tiny ML, so embedded system. So I made a wise activated robot car or microcontroller with tiny ML. So basically, what I did is that this real terminal can accept the the, the sound. So I say go go go, then it will get the robotic part to go. When I say stop. Then it will stop. So this is a combination between the tiny ML with the robotic. Not not really IoT yet, but it's more on the tiny ML with the robotic. Yeah. Okay. Right. Hope uh, Vincent answered your question. Uh, Vincent, uh, there's another question for you from Gopal Bhagat. He asks: Are solo projects and IoT harder to make and implement for personal use? Also, if someone lacks some resources to make projects, what should the individual do? Okay, this is a very good question. So, um, solo project are actually harder to make and implement for personal use. Yeah, I I would say, 
it's always begin with solo. So means you have an idea. But I will encourage you to find a teammate or maybe perhaps you can work on it yourself until you are comfortable that you have something like uh, what others can help you to do. Right? So you have a plan. Okay, I need some help for this. I need some help for that. So that's where you uh, talk to people. Hey, I have this project. Are you interested to work together? Right. So, so it's definitely good that you work together with people else you will not be motivated, right? Because alone is actually very hard. I think you agree that because it's need a lot of discipline for that, right? So you need to make it happen. So, but a lot of startup is speaking from alone. So that is where they slowly have co-founders and then join them, right? And also for your second question, if someone lacks some resources to make project, what should that individual do? I would say the resources is really out there. It's just depending on whether you know it assists or not, right? Because I think a lot of the organization out there right now, which I know, are sponsoring some of the hardware devices or even some uh, support for the uh, members that's interested to make some project, either a prototype project or even a commercial project. Yeah. So I encourage you to join my Embedded System Professional Discord community where I have uh, different professional from different uh, field is joining there. So if you need any help, please feel free to wise up so that the community able to help you. Yeah. Either from the pet publishing or some of that then we are able to help you. Yeah. So, and also uh, you can follow me. So wherever I have this kind of information, uh, where, where are some of the good things that you can grab or maybe some of the uh, free learning opportunity that you can grab, then I will share it on my LinkedIn. Yeah. I hope that answer you and get you a good start. Yeah, right. So uh, Winston, I received a question in my Google form. It says, how can IoT revolutionize the tech industry and will it ever reach the importance among consumers for solving problems that were once being unsolvable? Uh, you mean IoT? Uh, can you repeat the question again? I didn't get the first uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. How can IoT revolutionize the tech industry and will it ever reach the importance among consumers for solving such problems that were once believed being unsolvable? Yes, I would say IoT, IoT is, whether you realize it or not, IoT is revolutionizing our everyday life right now. It's actually affecting our daily life right now. Imagine 10 years ago, do you have internet? You probably have just a mobile device, right? You don't have Facebook or maybe you don't have some of these uh, linking, Google, Meet, all this, right? So... And then right now with this IoT, basically we are in this Google Meet. It's made possible with the internet of things, right? So that we are able to communicate even though you are in India and in Singapore, right? So it's actually affecting our day-to-day -day life. And whether or not it will, uh, I mean, I've solved the problem that is ne uh, never assist or maybe it's the problem that never been solved. I would say definitely, yes. There's a lot of the problem out there is waiting for us like the creative mind right here to find the problem, to solve your day-to-day -day problem that you can see, your neighbors can see, or anyone that can see. Right? Grab the opportunity, solve the problem, and then you are the creator, you are the entrepreneur. right? So that you are solving the problem that someone else, uh, or maybe that's not a yet, or maybe that will come in the future. Because every day we are facing with so many problems. Trust it or not, it's, we are having... A lot of problems, it's just that whether we care or not, right? Yeah, so definitely IoT is a technology that able to use it, but of course, we need to use it wisely because, like I say, there's like security threat as well, right? Because there's this, uh, so that's why we need to do it correctly as well. Use it for good and not use it for bad because technology always there's two sides a good side and the bad side, right? Yeah, so always uh, use it with moderate, right? Okay, right. I hope that answers. Yeah, so we can move ahead with the hands-on session, I guess. Yeah, sure. Hopefully, everyone's back. So let me begin. So for this hands-on part, I have a very simple hands-on. So hopefully, I, I hope all of you can follow through as well. So I will just try to uh, shift my screens, all that, right? All that. So uh, yeah, because sure. I, I prepared a slide as well. I also have the, I can do a live demo as well so that we can go together. 
Uh, Vincent, let's have a break till uh, 25. Uh, you have been speaking for a while now, right? Uh, oh. People, um, if you have any questions, just note it down or put that in the chat box. We'll take that up at the end of the session. Yes. All right. And uh, Vincent, let's have a small break till 25. Then we could start. Uh, right? Until what time? Sorry. 25. 3.25. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, in our, our time zone. Uh, again, it's 25. Okay. Uh, three more minutes. Three, minute. yeah, okay. three more minutes. I'll, I'll let you know. All right. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Guys, just a reminder, if you have any questions, you could put that in the chat box. We'll take that uh, questions in the end of the session, right? So hang in there, three more minutes, two more minutes, then we could start with the hands-on session. All right, so it's 25, Vincent, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I'm able to hear you. Yes, then uh, we shall start. Sure, let's get everyone started. So yeah, so for this hands-on, so I would say, if you can follow through, that's good. If not, then I will uh, give you some of the resources so that you can try it out. yourself. So it's actually a very simple hands-on so that you're able to I believe everyone should have a mobile devices so we can use the mobile devices as an IoT devices and get started with the Microsoft Azure IoT Central application. Yeah. So let's get started. So I have some news about this. Let me share my screen. Okay. All right, I guess you can see my screen right now. Okay, so we are be going to do a very simple Azure IoT Central application. So, and connect your first device. So what do we really need for this session is an active Azure subscription. 
an Android or iOS phone. So no matter you are using Android or iOS devices, you can do this as well. So maybe the first question is, how do you have your active Azure subscription? So the good thing is you can create your free Azure account. So let's visit the Microsoft Azure page to create a free Azure account. So the link is this, azure.microsoft.com, E-N-U-S, free. So you'll, you'll see something like a page, uh, start free, pay as you go. Yeah. So when you first sign up, so you will have this uh, 200 Azure credit. But hey, don't, don't do that first. Because if you are a student, that's even better. So built in the cloud free with Azure for students. So I just found out this as well. So you can just put in students at the end. So just now this is free, right? Then you can have the students at the end. So use your university or school email to sign up and renew each year you are a student. So for this, right, when you sign up, you don't need to put any credit card because if you sign up for the general one, you will need to put a credit card, but they will not charge you unless you use over the quota, something like that. Okay, so you can sign up if you have a university or school email. So generally do not need the credit card so you can just uh, use it for free. Okay, so everyone can go to this and then, so you just, uh, I mean, if you want, don't have the student's email, it's okay. Then you just either provide a credit or debit card then just go on the agreement, agree to the customer agreement, privacy agreement. Then if you would like to information tips and offer about Azure, so, and then add technical support. So generally we don't need technical support because we are able to explore on our own because it's for our own learning. All right, so maybe let's give it some time for some of you that wanted to try to sign up for this. Okay, so basically you are in this Azure for the students, right? So you are here, so you can read some of the things, like what, what are the things that covered? Okay, so if you can just start free. Okay, so uh, yeah, so you can just, if you have an account, uh, for mine, I think definitely I'm not eligible because I'm not a student anymore. Uh, because they will do a student's verification. Yeah, so you need to have a verification method. So either by a verification code or maybe enter your school email address, your verified academic status. Right. You can do that right now. Or if you do not want, you can just go on with this. Okay, this is a general one. So you can just start free. So because I already have an Azure account, so that's why I, I can't. But for you, so some of the steps that you'll be going through is generally some of these provide your credit card, debit card, and then agree with the agreement, then technical support, then you will be able to create an account. And then whenever you have an account, you will see something like this. Yeah. Okay, so for those that following, yeah, I, I will give you some time to try it out. So that because our end goal is that when you come into this portal.azure.com, you, you have an account so you can see all these services that you can use. Yeah. Okay, anyone if having any problems, uh, feel free to raise up. So we'll, we'll give it some time so hopefully some of you can try it out. And I hope you are able to follow through. Okay, everyone. That's really the first step to unleash all the potential for this uh, Azure portal. And we are using one of the service called IoT Central Application. Or maybe some of you already have the account, so you can log in. We'll go through it together.
Is everyone doing okay? Yes, yes. All right. So maybe if you are doing okay, and if you allow me to continue, please let me know. Or maybe give me a, I think there's no thumbs up, right? There's no, uh, yeah. in here there's no thumbs up. So that I can proceed with the necessary. Because I want you to be excited as well so that you are able to connect your first IoT device. Okay, three, two, one. The, the end goal for the session right now is you are able to have the, I mean, for this particular minute is that you are able to have the Azure account so that you are able to visit the Azure portal at this uh, portal.azure.com. Okay, so maybe let me paste the link. Okay, so the angle is that you're able to log in this portal.azure.com where you are able to access all the services. So if you are able to log in and so on, please type in Yes, right. So that I can see the the live response from you guys. Uh, guys, if you are doing it, uh, do respond, all right? Else, if you're not able to do, also respond. Uh, we would like to see the yeah. live We would like to right? collect what, what are the, some of the problems and so on. I have on. created an account and have opened that link which you had shared. Okay, so you are able to have the portal as well, right? That's good. Thanks for responding. Okay, yeah, I guess good. So let's let's. Yeah, I'm, I have I have just verified it. I've just verified my account. All right, that's good. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, so we'll move on. So for those that are not able to follow, don't worry. So we are able to. I mean, you have this recording, uh, so you are able to follow it other time, and also of course you can feel free to uh, continue to uh, discuss with me. All right, let's begin. Let's continue on. So I have a few more slides. All right, so right now you are able to see this, right? We see Azure portal. So in this portal, so there's so many other services. You can have a virtual machine. You can have some other SQL database or that, right? We are not going to explore all that yet. We will be doing just the first thing, which is IoT central application. So search for IoT central application on the search bar above. Okay, you can just search on here. Okay, then you click on it. Okay, so let, let me also do it together here. So, you, for example, you can search here. So, IoT central application. So, this is the services. So, just click on it. So, it will bring you to the IoT central application. So, of course, I have created two. You, for you, I think it will be empty. Right? So, we will be going through how to create one. So, actually, it's quite straightforward. Don't be worried about all the configuration. So, you just need to know how to configure some of it and you'll be fine. So, if you are in here, to create, it's very straightforward. So you can see this create button. Just click on create. Okay, so it will come up with something like this. So resources name, application URL, subscription, resources group, pricing plan, templates, location. Wow, that's a lot of things. How should I do that, right? So basically, let's come back to here. I have this slides right here. To explain a little bit further. Okay, so you'll be here, so you'll create. And here, there's one important concept that I would like to uh, tell about is the resource group. So just now you created the account, right? That's basically your Azure subscription. So that means it's tied to an account. So resources group, so maybe it's, it's like a grouping, right? You organize them by a group. So maybe for me, if you see here, I created a demo resource group. So means everything under here, whatever resources, either uh, I need a VM, I need an IoT central application. 
I need a database, everything is under this group because it's a demo resource group. So a resource group is a container that holds related resources for an Azure solution. So you can understand it like that. So you can create a demo or maybe a create uh, any name that you would like. Right? Yeah. And this resources name is that. So we are currently have a resource. Maybe you can just have a, any name that you like because this will be your application URL, like IoT sharing dot Azure IoT central dot com. So you can have something like IoT sharing dot Azure IoT central dot com. I think it's already taken by me, so you might not have it. So you can try out some others uh, name uh, or maybe a combination with numbers, right? And I think by default, you should have this Azure subscription one, something like that, unless you have more accounts. And then the, the, the resource group, I already create new, so you can click on the create new to add on the new. And then the pricing plan is uh, standard too. I will explain more about the pricing plan in a while. And then for the template is we'll be doing some custom application. When you click on custom application, the location will be uh, choose automatically automatically for you. Yeah, I believe so. That is what happened to me. Okay, so this is basically the configuration that you need to do. Okay, so maybe I will also go through with you as well. So I will say my resource name is Winscott. Uh, oh, Winscott is in use. Cannot. So, Vincent Cock. Okay, Vincent Cock seems okay. Vincent Cock .com. Azure subscription one. Resource group, I have a demo. Pricing plan standard two. And then the template, I will say custom application. So, it will automatically create the Australia East for me. And then, if you want to learn more about pricing, of course, you can click on it. Then, it will open up a new window for you. So you can see the comparison table. So we are using the standard two. So it's basically just the you the different use cases. Uh, how many? How often are your IoT devices sending the messages per day, per hour, or per few minutes? Right. Then of course here there's a price per device per month. But if you see here, there's a two free devices, right? Included free quantity per application. But of course, if you just sign up for the uh. This Azure subscription, you will be given two hundred dollar to use all these services. So I, I think it's not that expensive. It's really you are doing it in the business use cases. These are some of the more information like what are all these pricing application template. If you want to learn more, so create. So once you create, so you'll be initializing the deployment. And then deployment in progress. And ta -da, we will have it in three, two, one, go. Yeah, we have it. So right now you can just go to the resource. And you should see this link. Your link definitely is different than mine. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I will stop here. Is everyone okay thus far? So you need to be able to see your link. So actually, I already have covered a few slides. So we need to be able to see your link. Okay, so if let's say you click on the link, it brings you to the dashboard, basically, the configuration page for your IoT central application. All right, so right now, that, that's about that for now. So you'll be here. Okay, everyone doing good? I guess it's a straightforward process. Shouldn't face any issue. issue right? All good? Perhaps I will just give you a bit more time to to be familiar with the uh, interface, right? Yeah, I, I know that you need some time because myself, I have been through that as well.
Okay, meanwhile, if you have any question, please feel free to put on the chat. I will check it time to time. And also, we'll answer it live uh, later on. Account creation process. Yes, that's good. I just completed the account creation process. All right. So then right now you need to, so the first step is account creation. The second step will be create the IoT central application. So what you need to do is search for IoT central application. And then you will be able to create the resources. Okay, so yeah, keep keep me posted on your progress. Where where are you? So that we can do this together. Because we are we are spending the time together. I hope you will gain something from the session as well. We are almost there actually. Yeah. Because with this uh, Microsoft Azure IoT Central application, it makes the whole deployment very, very easy. Actually, in a way, it's actually kind of low code. With all the support that they have, the, the ecosystem that they created. Yeah. Okay, I will just give you some time on. If any of you done, please uh, let me know. I mean, uh, once you are just done, you can just voice out or maybe type in the chat. So at least when I gather more, yeah. one or two or three done, I will just proceed. Yeah, yeah Um. I've already opened and verified everything. Now I'm already in uh, Microsoft Azure. Uh, you already created the Azure IoT Central as well. You have your unique link already, IoT Central no, application URL. No, no, I created the account already. I'm yet to create the um, IoT. Oh, okay. So do you have any problem with creating the IoT Central application? Maybe I will show you. I'm yet you to the... start it. Okay, let, let me show you the slide again. Huh? Sorry. Okay, good that you okay. mentioned that. Yeah. So that I know where you are. Yes. So, okay. So basically, what you need to do is, uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I'm having a doubt actually about it. Like, yeah. uh, I have, uh, I finished that registration, or and sorry, the I created that I would like uh, you asked to create that application, right? On yeah, create. But I got a yeah, I got a similar page to uh, which you're showing. So. After that, how should we like proceed? You mean you, you got something like this? Uh, no, like uh, one which you're showing in the slideshow. Uh, something like this? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, actually then you'll see your go-to resource. Mm -hmm. Do you see the go-to resource thing? Yes. Yeah, you click on it, then you should be able to have your central application URL. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so you, you got it, so you, you are ahead of it. Right? So you will see something like this. Yes. Okay, so yeah, stay tuned while others are trying to catch up. Okay, right? okay. okay that's you. good so far. Yeah. So yeah, you basically just need this. So I will enlarge it so that you can see. So you just need to create a new. So once you search for the IoT Central application, click on create. So you'll be able to create a new IoT Central application. So key in all the details. So what are your resources name? So resources name might be uh, not available sometimes, so you might need to combine with some unique name or maybe combination with numbers. Yeah. Okay, so then after that, you will be uh, create, then it will show you deployment successful, and you will just click go to resource, and you will see something like this, your URL. Yeah. That's the most important part at, at this point. 
I hope most of you are able to follow through this to get your URL. So everyone's URL is different because that's your Azure account, your dashboard. Okay, so let me check if there's any message. No, okay, I think. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe I will just go a bit more so that uh, actually this is uh, something that you need to work on on the background. So on your mobile. Yeah. So once once you are able to see this, right? Once you are able to see this, congrats. So you already done the first step. So the right now we are using our mobile phone as the IoT device. So you will need to download something called IoT PMP app, IoT plug and play app on your mobile. So you are able to turn your phone into an to an IoT device. Yeah. Okay, so you can just search for IoT plug and play on your Android phone or maybe iPhone so that you you will able to use it. Yeah. So later on you'll be able to display your phone uh, data such as battery level, locations, and also even to do a remote monitoring and re remote triggering. Yeah. Okay, while waiting for us you, so you can do this uh, app download. Okay, hope, hope most of you are able to follow. Um, sir, can you please yeah. go back to the slides? Sure. Okay, thanks. Slides. Yeah. Uh, here. Yeah, thanks. I got it. So you got your URL. So that's the most uh, the angle for the first part. You need to create the resource. Yeah. So that we are utilizing the cloud right now. Yeah. And then you should see something like this when you click on it. And while waiting for the next step, please download the IoT plug and play app which we will turn our phone into an IoT device. Because right now, I believe you don't have other custom device like uh, ESP32 or ESP8266, right? So we will just make use of our phone because our phone is basically an IoT device. Yeah. Okay. A bit more, then we will be able to see something. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, the next step was after getting the UR after opening the URL which was unique to us. The next step is installing the app, right? IoT yes. plugin. Exactly. Oh, yeah. IoT plug and play. I, I hope you can find it on the app store. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, good. So install it, then just open it up. Later on we'll use it to scan the QR code to connect your IoT device to the uh the IoT center. Yeah. So that both them of them are linked right, with the security. Okay. So currently, uh, let where me do just... we get the QR code? Oh no 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 worries. Once you download, then I will I will go through the next step. Right now, what you need to do is first you need to have the URL, and then the next is you need to have the apps. I O T T M P F. Okay, someone raise hand, is it? Yeah, um, when opening the IoT central application, you're on, what do we uh, write on, um, how to call it, central, sorry, resource group? Uh, no, you you had, you had didn't do any resource group yet. Yeah, so you download the app. Oh, okay, first. yeah. Okay, okay. So you, once you have the application URL, so you can just open it up first and do nothing first. And then the next step is to download the IoT PMP app. Yeah. Then we'll move on together. Yeah. Okay, so 
main main two things right now, the URL that is unique for you and also the app. So get these two things ready, then we will move on. Yeah. So the exciting part is coming. Okay, the app should hopefully should work. Yeah, I, I've tried it out multiple times. It should work for everyone. Absolutely, that was that was wonderful. Uh, you just went through each and every step, and uh, interesting that everyone tried to do it or tried to follow at least, or maybe uh, they'll they'll have an idea about what's going on out here today, and yeah. they'll try it out someday later, right? Yeah. Right, guys. Exactly. Just if if you're hearing me and if you're hearing Vincent, just drop uh, drop a thumbs up in the chat so that we can just let. Mm. Yeah, we'll learn together during this session. Exactly. We'll get to know whether you were listening exactly or not. Yeah, and also whether you are understanding or not, right? Or maybe some of my teachings or all that. Right? So. Sure, if you have any questions, definitely you can uh, just unmute yourself and ask. All right, I guess most of you are okay, right? There's a lot of thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. So people are listening, that's that's wonderful. Uh, all right, so I guess you are ready. So let's move on to the exciting part, right? So hopefully, actually it's just a few more steps. So let's see. Okay, okay, wow. A lot of messages right now. Amazing. Okay, good. All right, so let me share my screen again. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Right now, okay, right now you need to listen carefully on what is next, right? I think the first two things you already achieved. Congrats. So the moving on, what you need to do on your unique URL page on your browser that you open up, do you see at a device, right? Okay, I will, I will try to go slowly so that everyone is following. Okay, add a device. So what, once you click on the add a device, okay, so I repeat again. So you go to your unique URL. Okay, you will definitely see this page and you will definitely see a add a device. Click on the add a device and you will see this page. And there's a random number, random string generated. It's okay, right? So just leave it as it is, right? So device name, device ID. So there's this uh, device ID that is automatically generated. And device template, we uh, just temporarily are assigned. And then you can just click on create. Okay. Then, then you should see something like this here. Okay, three step. So add a device. Okay. I think it will auto generate all the things for you. Okay, so probably you don't need to do anything. And then just click on create. And then you should see something like this here. Okay, so your number and your strings might be different from me. Okay, it's, it's fine. So what you need to do next is to click on it. So it's actually clickable. Once you click in, you should see something like this. And we will be ready to connect the mobile phone to IoT Central application. Okay, you will see this connect, right? There is this connect on the top left. Once you click on connect, there's this device connection group came up and you'll click on QR code. There's this QR code generated. Yeah. So just as one of you asked it, how do you get the QR code? So this is how you can get it. And on your mobile, open the IoT plug and play app and scan the QR code. And this will be the result that you'll get. Yeah. Could you okay. please repeat this step? 
Sure. So I will do it together with you. So I will just, this is the angle that we have. Okay. So right now on the IoT, uh, your unit URL here, okay, add a device. That's the first step. Okay. So there's a pop-up appear to you. And all these numbers are generated for you automatically. And then unassign everything is, is fine. So you just click on create. Okay. And then after that, you'll just click on this one into it. You'll into here. Okay, so far okay until this step. Okay, I hope it's okay so far. So you'll be able to have it here. So device, so you should have, when you click on device right here, you should have one device already and then click on it. Up to here. Yeah. Okay, and when you click, so this is the step where you connect your phone to the IoT central application. So click on connect. And then this is that is where you see the QR code. And take your mobile phone. Open the IoT plug and play app. Okay. And then you should see on your IoT plug and play, you should have a scan QR code. I hope you can see. There's this scan QR code when you are first inside there. Then you scan QR code. Then, yeah, and when you scan the QR code, it will say connecting to Azure IoT. So give it some time. So it will rotate the loading. So basically plug and play. So that means all the configuration are done for you by this uh, plug and play. Okay, it, will, it will take some time depending on your internet speed as well. Anyone successfully connect so far? Yes, we could call. All right. Uh, yeah, I've connected. That's good. That's good. Now I'm also trying yeah, to connect. Now. I'm having an issue here. You see, network issue. I will try it later. Yeah, make sure your network is OK, right? And yeah, also for this, if not mistaken, you do not need to be on the same network. I think it should be fine. You are, uh, you are able to uh, do it uh, just on the different network. Wait, let me generate a okay, now. I have been done something wrong. Like before, they, they, they say like this is the reason. They just decide to send pump. I feel like, and I see my roll number there. I feel like I've done something wrong. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, like it's that day, perfect. all of a sudden he was talking about uh, how to call it. Yeah. Uh, students that have to redo the end semester exams. Wow. And all of a sudden he sent another batch of roll. Numbers. Yes, Vincent. We could uh, move ahead. Okay. So I think once you connected, right? So you will see that. Actually, you can see this overview. Do you, this is all the data that you have from your mobile devices. So actually, your mobile device is an IoT device right now. So actually, it will take some time to uh, connect. Okay. So I think it's depending on my network. So I think it's connecting. Yeah. So if you can see the, let me see my battery level. So it will take some time to load depending on my internet. Give it a moment. Or maybe I will just reconnect again. So if you have some connection issue, you can always uh, connect again. So, 
Anyone able to see the dashboard? Uh, yeah, I got all all the like overview of battery level, etc. That's great. So basically, congrats, you have already connected your mobile devices to the Azure Central application. Okay, so give it, I think I might have some problem with my internet right here. So basically, what, what you are, uh, yeah, it's connected. So you see my battery level is 82, and my LTT is 16.8, and some of my location is loading right now, and acceleration. So basically, they are using all the sensors from our mobile devices. So you see where's my location right now, and then the pressures, all that, right? And this is what? Can you can you guess this is what? Just how I mentioned, IoT is, is about two things. Remote monitoring and triggering. This is which one? I think it's pretty straightforward, right? This is remote monitoring, right? Basically, we have an IoT device somewhere else. So maybe at home or whatever, right? So we can see our battery level is 81, our altitude is what? Our acceleration data, our pressure. Of course, this, all these sensors are available on our mobile devices. Of course, if you are using some development board, you can connect different sensors, temperature, humidity sensors, right? And of course, then right now, I want you to try something. This is remote monitoring. What about remote triggering, right? Can you trigger your IoT device? The answer is yes. You can go to this command. I think everyone is, if you are using the IoT plug and play mobile, you, you scroll down, you should see something like this, light on. When you click on this run, you see your, your mobile flashlight turn on and off for two times. And from your mobile device the app, you should see some command, command receive. Right? So this is a command receive from the cloud. Anyone able to do that? Remote triggering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm able to perform that. So your light is able to on? Yeah, it is switched on. That's good, yeah. So this is all the plug and play. So eventually you can see no coding is involved, but of course it get you uh, started easily. Right. Of course, if you later on you have some development board or that, you might need to do some coding. Yeah. And of course, you can change some of these things here, how many powers or whatever, the duration. So all these are the configuration that you can play with. Right. All right, so that's the remote monitoring and then after that, remote triggering. So basically, that, that is about the simple hands-on that I have. So in this quick start, you use a smartphone app as an IoT device that connects to IoT Central. Yeah, congrats. Yeah. So you are able to uh, emulate your phone as an IoT device and send the data over to the, to the cloud. Yeah. And then monitor it over to the cloud. Imagine that you have 10 devices then that you need to monitor right on a, on a, on a farm or, or the smartphone, right? a smart home, then you are able to connect all this to the IoT central application and then monitor them from a dashboard. Yeah. Okay, maybe before that, maybe I will just give it some time. Is anyone having any problem? You are able to do the remote triggering and remote mon monitoring? Okay, so what, what I'm, I'm just showing here is actually just a very simple uh, hands-on, but the, you can use it for different uh, application. I just wanted to show the idea set for the remote monitoring and the remote triggering. Everyone is good, able to do that. So that's the step-by-step the -step guide that I had so that you're able to follow through for your first Azure IoT Central application. And this Azure, there's a lot more other uh, resources, uh, uh, services, like even machine learning that you can explore as well. I guess this is it. Yeah. The last so, one. Yeah, I do have a few more slides, but it's just some uh, uh, something to, to, to share with you guys. So, sure. and of course, 
if you are not using this anymore, for example, after this, uh, you are not using it anymore. So you can uh, delete the application, right? So that this doesn't assist out there anymore. So in your LD central application, so if you if you see down there, there's this application, then you click on management, and then you can delete this application. So that is not there because I think it's, it's, if it is there, and then sometimes you know, right, might, might be a case that uh, they use up some more resources or what, then it might uh, give you a surprise view. Right, yeah. So always it's good that if you are not using it, please delete it. Yeah. Just, just a reminder for this. Yeah. And then some of these are more resources that you can do. Uh, what, what I've just shown is just a very short demonstration. Of course, there's more uh, learning to be done. So some of the uh, more resources that you can uh, learn. For all, all, all of this is available free uh, on Microsoft Learn platform. And also some of this uh, is actually connecting this uh, real terminal. So I, I can share with you uh, where, where are you able to get this. It's actually from a company, Six Studio. So you can actually have this and then connected to a different sensors and then uh, able to monitor the device uh, data. Okay, this device I think is about around 36 uh, USD. Yeah. And then time to time they might have some promotion. So it's, it's just like your phone, but of course you can do more programming right here uh, to, to connect to different sensors that you have. Yeah. I mean, just could post the session, uh, could you just share with us all these uh, relevant resources yeah, sure, uh, that sure. you have put in uh, this slide? You can yeah. just share me a couple of links so that I can uh, send it over to uh, all those who are here. Definitely, can I, I can do that. Yeah, so I will share with you. All. Yeah, and also some of these. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, Microsoft they have this uh, Azure IoT Plug and Play certified. So mobile phone is one of it. Of course, they do have some of the others uh, devices that is Plug and Play. So Plug and Play means that you can just use it like what we experienced just now. Right? Yeah, and yeah, just uh, yeah, as uh, just now we uh, mentioned. So I'm running this Embedded System Professional Discord channel. So feel free to join. So there's a uh, different expert in the group. And then you can, uh, we'll post some uh, latest technology there. And also we have this the debug store uh, right now on our server. If you want to purchase some of the uh, sensors or maybe development board. So feel free to join the community. Yeah, it's, it's totally free. Yeah, and in future, we might be running some book club because if you know pet publishing is a book, publisher right? yeah. so there, there's we might be running some book club so that you can learn okay so it's, it's free currently yeah. so we are just started about three weeks ago and finally i would like to uh, thanks everyone for going through the session with me and you can connect with me on linking and and final things i would like to mention is that get inspired and make things happen yeah. thank you very much Wonderful, wonderful. That's that's uh, quite a dramatic close. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much, Vincent. And uh, everyone, uh, these are the links to uh, Vincent's uh, Discord channel and the link tree that he has has been shared over in the chat box. All right. Any other resources will be shared to you over the mail. All right. And uh, again, uh, I would like to call Ashmita upon for the last thank you so uh, it's a pleasure for me to deliver the thank you note for such an amazing session thank you so much mr vincent for joining us today and sharing your knowledge and insights with all the people here and uh, thanks a lot to the amazing audience all of you joined and we hope that you all enjoyed the session and you all have a lot to take back home with you and implement it in your upcoming projects as well and of course, special mention to the organizing committee. Without their efforts, it wouldn't have been possible to like uh, conduct the session and invite you and invite the other people who are here. So thanks a lot once again. And with that, I would like to conclude. Right. Uh, thank you so very much, everyone. Uh, and it was it was actually encouraging to see that uh, the numbers didn't drop. And you guys were consistent in listening to Vincent and uh, going on and the way he was directing you. So thank you so very much for staying back, learning something and taking back home. 
the insights about IoT. All right. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Vincent, again. And, yeah, no uh, problem. As usual, we'll, I have been interested. And yes, please do share us the resources, the links, so yeah. that I can share with all these guys. Yeah, I will right. send it to you right after the uh, session. Yeah. And my final takeaway for the audience here is that, as usual, that's my favorite tagline: is that get inspired, make great things happen. Okay. So get yourself inspired with all the things out there, and you'll be great. Right. There's a lot of wonderful things out there. So, and you are all the future creator that will solve all the world problem. So let's do our best. Yes. All Thank right. you, guys. Uh, the session is closed for now.